I'm looking at Genesis chapter 30. And in this chapter, we find out that Jacob ends up with four wives and four baby mamas. And it results in baby mama drama. That's what we're going to talk about. Let's look at some of the drama that comes from a man having multiple wives and having children by all of them. The first thing you're going to see is death wishes. In Genesis 30 and verse 1, it says, And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. You see, Rachel envied Leah because Leah, her sister, gave Jacob children and she couldn't. And envy is that feeling of discontent and resentment that you have inside you when you see something that someone else has and you want it. And the Bible says in Hebrews 13, 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You see, she was so envious, she was so discontent with what she had, seeing what her sister had, that she wanted to die. She was to the point of being suicidal. She approaches Jacob about it as if it's his fault. She told him, give me children, else I die. Rachel is one of the seven barren women in the Bible. And all these women will picture Mary because all of them have a miracle birth. You see, Mary's miracle birth was a virgin birth. But these seven women are... Sarah in Genesis 11.30, Rebecca in Genesis 25.21, Rachel in Genesis 29.31, Manoah's wife in Judges 13.2, the Shunammite in 2 Kings 4.14, Hannah in 1 Samuel 1.2, and Elizabeth in Luke 1.7. You see, the problem is that Rachel, she's barren and she's discontent with the situation that God's put her in. Instead of being content with what God's given her, she's discontent. And she was used to being the center of attention. She was the beautiful sister, while Leah only had nice eyes, so Leah never got any of the attention. It was always Rachel. And even though Leah's given uh, Jacob uh, four children already, he's still given Rachel more of the attention, it seems. But to try and balance things out a bit, the Lord shuts the womb of Rachel and he had opened the womb of Leah to try to balance things out a bit, give Leah some attention. You see, it's a common thing for a woman to be envious of the attention her sister gets when she has a baby. And that's what happens here. And this is where the drama began for Jacob. So she constantly jumps his case about not having any children. And obviously, it doesn't have anything to do with Jacob. It's not his fault. But that's what another part of the drama comes in, and that is the blame game. In Genesis 30 and verse 2, And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? Jacob is angry because he isn't in God's stead. It isn't his place to decide who will have children and who won't have children. He's not the one opening and closing the wombs. It was God himself that would have withheld her from having a child. But when you have so many different wives, you'll have so many problems, and it leads to the blame game. People always putting the blame on somebody else. Adam and Eve were monogamous. But they even blamed each other the first chance that they got. Adam blamed his wife when he ate the fruit, even though it was his choice. And in the Bible, having children is seen as a blessed thing. And this is why Jake, uh, why Rachel wanted one so badly. And it killed her that Jacob's other wife had children, but not her. Especially since it was her sister. This is true sibling rivalry here. You see, Jacob's getting himself in a mess, getting so many different wives, and they're going to be fighting and blaming him and blaming each other about everything that's going on. 
It says in Psalm 127 and verse 3, it says, Children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So Rachel wanted children. It's seen as a reward from God to have children. But with all the baby mama drama, as they call it, involved, there was death wishes. Rachel was to the point of wishing she was dead. She said, give me children el else I die. And there were probably death threats going on. And people playing the blame game. And blaming Jacob. And next, bad decisions. You see, having multiple wives was a bad decision that led to even more bad decisions. And Rachel's envy led to her bad decision as well. She's so envious, so she's going to make this bad decision in verse 3. And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in and to her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. See, Rachel wants Jacob to take her maid Bilhah and go in and to her, and she wants Jacob to have a baby by her. And really, it wouldn't be Rachel's. It would be Bilhah's but it would automatically become her adopted child. And at the same time, it would make Bilhah a wife of Jacob's. So Jacob is about to take on another wife and another mother to one of his children. Rachel said, She shall bear up on my knees that I may also have children by her. So she would sit on Rachel's lap or knees as she had the child, and it would be like she was having it. I guess she saw that as close as she could get to having her own child. It says in verse 4, She gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in and to her. So Jacob agrees to it, you know, like it's a wise thing to do or something. Or maybe he was just sick of her complaining, and at the same time, the average low-down husband isn't going to pass up on a chance to go to bed with another woman. But verse 5, And Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son. So Jacob has a child by Rachel's handmaid, Bilhah, who is also now his wife, and the child is a boy. But this horrible decision of taking in all of these baby mamas is going to result in reaping the consequences. Verse 6, And Rachel said, God hath judged me, and hath also heard my voice, and hath given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. You see, uh, Rachel believes that God is blessing her with this child. Many times uh, people confuse, uh, you know, things that, get, things that they see as a good thing in their life. They automatically just see that it came from God. That's not always necessarily true. And while God did allow this to happen, it doesn't mean that he was for it, if you know what I mean. As you probably know, Jacob's sons end up making up the 12 tribes. And the tribe of Dan, the, the child that she has here, Dan, his tribe ends up being the worst one out of the whole bunch. And he's a picture of the Antichrist. And the tribe of Dan ends up in idolatry. Look at Genesis forty nine seventeen. It says, Dan shall be a serpent, by the way serpent, an adder in the path that biteth the horse heels so that his rider shall fall backward. Uh, Dan, the tribe of Dan gets off into idolatry. Dan means judge and Dan's idolatry leaves them excluded from being a part of the sealed bunch in the tribulation. You know, the 144,000 is going to include, um, is going to be made up of 12,000 male Jewish virgins, virgins from each tribe of Israel. But if you read Revelation 7, you will see the tribe of Dan doesn't have 12,000 from their tribe sealed in their foreheads. You see, that's a consequence of this decision here. Dan, the tribe of Dan, ends up being the worst tribe. Rachel and Jacob jump the gun, and it results in birthing the worst boy out of the bunch. In Genesis 30 and verse 7, it says, And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again, and bare Jacob a second son. 
So now Jacob has four by Leah and two by Bilhah. And the baby mama drama is so bad, it's about to turn into WrestleMania. Look at verse 8. It says, And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. And she called his name Nephtali. Nephtali means my wrestlings. This has gotten so bad that Rachel is now saying that she has prevailed. She was never seeking the Lord out about the situation, really, too much. Like, you know, Hannah, when she was in this situation in First Samuel, she was just seeking out the Lord so much that uh, somebody came in and thought she was drunk. That's how hard she was praying. But when Leah sees that Bilhah is popping these kids out left, left and right, she gives them a taste of their own medicine. And she's getting in on this WrestleMania here. And in Genesis 30 and verse 9, when Leah saw that she had left bearing, she took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife. Now Jacob gets his fourth wife and fourth baby mama here to add to the drama. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a son. And Leah said, A troop cometh. And she called his name Gad. Notice the humor. They named the kid Gad. And Leah said, A troop cometh. Leah is planning on having so many kids. She says, A troop cometh. And Zilpah, Leah's maid, bare Jacob a second son. And Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me blessed. And she called his name Asher. Asher means blessed. Blessed means happy. It's defined in the verse. Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters call me blessed. Verse 14, And Reuben, one of Leah's sons, went in the days of wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them unto his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Give me, I pray thee, of thy sons mandrakes. So Reuben goes and finds some mandrakes and this is a type of plant that they, what they believed was, it made you fertile. And, you know, in this big wrestling match where they're seeing who can have the most children, this is going to be a very valuable possession here. But he gives it to his mother Leah. Rachel finds out about it. And see, she's yet to have a child of her own. It's just her handmaid. Rachel's handmaid had a couple kids for her, but she can't she's not had any on her own so she wants the mandrake she thinks that'll make her have children and then you hear the baby mama drama start up again in verse 15 and she said unto her is it a small matter that thou hast taken my husband and wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes also and rachel said therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. Notice Leah said, Thou hast taken my husband. Wouldn't it be our husband? And wouldest thou take away my son's mandrakes? Pointing out that Reuben, that's her son, not yours. You don't have one, Rachel. You know, there. this is sibling rivalry here. And so this shows that Jacob usually stays the night with Rachel. Because Rachel said, Therefore he shall lie with thee tonight for thy son's mandrakes. So, in exchange for these mandrakes, Rachel's going to have Jacob lay with Leah. It says in verse 16, And Jacob came out of the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, Thou must come in unto me, for surely I have hired thee with my son's mandrakes. And he, he lay with her that night. So notice Jacob came out of the field. One thing we can say about Jacob is that he's a hard worker. A lot of men never come in out of the field because they never left the recliner to begin with. But Leah explains to Jacob that Rachel is pretty much pimping him out for those mandrakes. And it doesn't say that Jacob made a fuss about it. At this point, I guess he's used to the baby mama drama and just goes in and lays with Leah. And God hearkened unto Leah in verse 17, and she conceived and bare Jacob the fifth son. So now Leah's got five sons. She's got two, I guess what you would call adopted sons by her handmaid Zilpah. And she's got a commanding lead. I mean, she wasn't lying when she said a troop cometh. 
when she named Gad. And so, so Jacob's got five sons by Leah, two by Zilpah, two by Bilhah. Now, verse 18, And Leah said, God hath given me my hire, because I have given my maiden to my husband. And she called his name Issachar. And Issachar means his reward will come. But notice that she said, God hath given me my hire. I think she's mistaken. I, I don't believe that God was, was for her having those children. I mean, God obviously allowed Zilpah to have those children. And he allowed Leah to have those children. But I don't believe it was because of what she said. She says, because I have given my maiden to my husband. I don't think that God liked the idea of Jacob having all these wives and taking both Rachel's handmaiden and Leah's handmaiden and making them his wives. I don't think God was for that. God isn't giving her children because she gave her handmaid to lay with Jacob. God wasn't in even in such a horrible decision. But Leah conceived again and bare Jacob the sixth son. And Leah said, God hath endued me with a good dowry. Now will my husband dwell with me, because I have borne him six sons. And she called his name Zebulun. And Zebulun means dwelling of honor. She says, Now will my husband dwell with me. She thinks having all these sons will, will cause Jacob to love her enough to dwell with her. Do you see how crazy and twisted having multiple wives and multiple mothers of your children, it just results in the wives being envious and drama? Verse 21, And afterwards she bare a daughter and called her name Dinah. So Leah's just popping out children left and right. So finally they have a girl, and Leah really seems to have won the wrestling match with Leah. And Dinah is like the female equivalent of the name Dan. So it's almost like she's trying to one-up Rachel with the name because, you know, uh, Rachel's first kid with that uh, Bill Ha had for her was Dan. But it says in verse 22, And God remembered Rachel, and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. So finally Rachel is going to have her own child who you probably could consider the best one. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God hath taken away my reproach. And she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. So she called his name Joseph and said, The Lord shall add to me another son. And that's because Jacob, J, uh, Joseph's name, Joseph's name means adding. And she prophesied right because she does have another son later named Benjamin. But her first son, Joseph, actually grows up to be the greatest type of Jesus Christ in the Bible. And when we get to his story, I'll show you the similarities between Joseph and Jesus Christ. But from this story, you can see it's never a good idea to multiply wives. That was never God's plan for you to have more than one wife. And, you know, that's not accepted at all today in Christianity. The Mormons do it and stuff, but, you know, it's not a good idea. 